Hi, my name is Jenna Ward. I'm from California and I'm a second year vet student. Uh, I became interested in veterinary medicine when I was probably five years old. Probably a common story for a lot of people. I just loved pets so much and when someone told me there was a job where I could play with puppies and kittens all day, like heck yes, uh, learned very quickly that wasn't what the job was. Uh, but it was still super interesting and I still very much wanted to be a part of it. And as I learned more science as I got older, I was only more convinced that this was what I wanted to do. I have a very uh, niche interest, I'd say, in veterinary medicine. I really would like to go into theriogenology, which is reproduction. I'm really interested in equine reproduction, so I'd like to work with horses and helping breed them, but uh, my true interest is actually using those skills in endangered species. I'd really like to work with the San Diego Zoo or the Smithsonian or something like that in helping preserve endangered species by assisting their reproduction. Uh, but if not, equine practitioner. I would really, really like enjoy working with horses. Uh, I started preparing for veterinary school very, very early. Uh, I always took as many science classes as possible and took every opportunity to volunteer with animal rescues, usually small animal. And I started riding horses at a very young age, at around eight. So whenever a horse needed to be treated for any various ailments or had a farrier's appointment, I would try to be there so that I could see what they did, how they did it, if it was something that I could see myself doing as I grew up. Uh, that allowed me to make some connections that let me start teching at age 16. Uh, learned then I did not want to be a small animal vet, but I still really enjoyed practicing. So I kind of bounced off of that experience to get me into Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, which was a fantastic, fantastic animal science school in California that let me explore all different interests. And preparing there for vet school was mostly doing well in my classes, making sure that I studied and learned the material rather than just cramming for the test. And it also, I prepared myself by trying to contact as many species as possible. At Cal Poly, I was really lucky I got to handle chickens and goats and sheep and horses and cows and a lot of species that I hadn't really dealt with before, pigs as well. So it was definitely a super great experience to just get my hands on as many animals as possible and understand the people who I would be working with if I worked in the vet industry because you have to work very closely with your owners, with your clients. And uh, that was a really good preparation for me, just understanding the industry. Uh, I also tried to tech where I could, uh, but it was really just the academic preparation. I think that is super important. Uh, the advice I'd give is just seek out opportunities where you can find them. I took a lot of classes that I didn't need to. I took a couple jobs I didn't need to for my degree specifically, but it allowed me to really hone my skills and find my own interests. Uh, that's how I found reproduction. I took a class just because and got so interested that I took everything I could get my hands on. And it'll really prepare you for once you get into vet school, it makes you feel a little less overwhelmed because it's gonna be scary no matter what, it's a whole different experience. But the more prepared you are by just talking to as many people in the industry and taking as many classes as you can that don't overwhelm you, <laughs> that's, that's really the best you can do and it's what I did. Uh, vet school has been pretty incredible so far. It's hard, I'm not gonna deny that, but you have a really incredible support network with you. Uh, our class, we have 134, I believe, and I don't know everyone's names. I'm, I'm pretty much limited to the people that I am in lab with, but we're all pretty close. It ends up a little clicky sometimes because everyone knows each other's business because we're around each other eight hours a day. But I also know that I have a huge support network. I have distinct memories of all of us getting very, very tired after some of our exams second semester. And we got a group of about 20 of us just sitting in front of the quad, just chucking a volleyball around and uh, dodging someone else who was playing Frisbee. And it just ended up a really, really interesting time. And of course, everyone brings their dogs on campus when we're doing neuro exams. And everyone just enjoys each other's company, which is a very, very nice thing to have. And it's very wonderful to know that if I'm ever struggling, I have a huge network of people that I can reach out to to assist me with that. Uh, not gonna lie, time management is not 
my strength. I am not very good at it, but I try. Uh, for studying, I found that just giving yourself reachable goals. It doesn't matter if what you can do, what's reachable for you, is different than what's reachable for someone else. I know someone who can study hours and hours and hours a day and be perfectly ready to do it the next day. I honestly can't. But just figure out what your limits are and don't try to overreach those. The thing is in vet school, you can never study enough to get 100% on everything. There's just not enough time in the world. And even if there was, it's I'm not sure it would even be possible. So take the first couple weeks to really try and figure out what's possible for you in a day. And maybe you have a class that's really easy for you. Use that as a reward if you don't feel comfortable taking a break, because I know some people don't. But don't be afraid to take a break and don't be afraid to take care of yourself. That's priority and it'll make your studying a lot more effective. So that's kind of my advice for uh, studying. Uh, don't be afraid to use weekends, but don't spend your entire time inside or you'll get really, really bored and be a giant stress case by the end of the semester. Uh, my advice for success in undergrad as well as veterinary school is really just don't be afraid to take a break and take care of yourself. I know that's something I keep repeating, but it's something that I think is super, super important. Uh, if you are here, if you are looking to be here, you're probably an overachiever. You're probably a little bit of a stress case, some of us more than others. Uh, but self-care is so, so important because you won't be you unless you take a break. Find something that you really enjoy doing, whether it's riding horses or knitting or watching movies or reading books, and just try to make time for that. Uh, for success in vet school, just find something you love and make sure to do it frequently because it'll help you feel more balanced, more okay, and it'll allow you to be more successful when you are in class, when you are at home studying. I found that if I got in a point where I was studying too much in lecture, I wouldn't even be able to pay attention because you just got so wound up. So to succeed, I really just, one, self-care. Two, I would make sure that you try to, in undergrad or as early as high school, if you're worried about it for undergrad, find your study style. I know a lot of us struggled at the beginning because we had gotten away with cramming or uh, our classes hadn't challenged us to the point where we'd really needed to test our ability to memorize, our ability to connect concepts. And the earlier you figure that out, the better your life is going to be because you will know about how long it's going to take you to study, about how much effort you need to put into memorizing this concept or understanding this concept and it allows you to work with your professors to find your learning style and what's going to help you the most. So to succeed in, in vet school and in college in general, just know yourself, take time to yourself, and try to figure out how you work best early on so that you can plan your life.